Now, living in Rhode Island makes for plenty of staycation options, including the historic seaside Stone House Inn. Beautiful. That's right. We are on the road this morning, heading to Little Compton. Get ready. This is going to be spectacular. Where Ashley Erling joins us from the beautiful estate right wow, now. Wow! Look, look at this. Look good, at this. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning, guys. Isn't it beautiful out here? Welcome to my chateau for the morning. I'm here at Stone House, and we've made our way all the way down here to Little Compton, and we are going to learn all about the property this morning with Teresa and Kate. Kate is from the Newport Experience, which Stone House is a part of. Good morning. Good morning, Ashley. Thank you for coming all the way out. We're happy to see you. It's such a pleasure. Now, for those who don't know, because I think Stone House might be one of your little hidden gems. And if you come out here, we're not in Newport, we're in Little Compton, and this property is where we are today. This is Little Compton, Rhode Island, but it's considered Newport County. People often forget that. Mm -hmm. So we are a hospitality company in Newport, located in Newport, called the Newport Experience. We own and operate Ocean Cliff Hotel, which is a 24 room hotel on the ocean, focusing on social events, primarily weddings. We have a 200 slip marina in Newport, right in the harbor. We have a small tented facility in there called the Regatta Place. And then we have a schooner that's 101 feet, the Aurora. Everyone knows the Aurora. She's uh, on break right now, but mm -hmm. that's our little mascot. So this was an addition to our collection. About 2015, I think we purchased it. And it's just been phenomenal. It's mm -hmm. so ingrained in the history of this area. I, you probably noticed on your way down that the views are stunning. The coastal farmland is just, it's its spectacular. It's a very special place. I always say the drive out here is part of the experience because it really kind of gets you into that mindset of being relaxed and being at ease. And by the time you get out here, Teresa, you're, you're ready to relax. And I think that's part of the beauty and the charm of Stonehouse. Now, you're the general manager here. Let's talk a little bit more specifically about this property and what folks might find if they come to visit here. Oh, sure. Um, well, it's peace. It's relaxing, and it's just a place to come and unwind. Um, unplug. We unplug, yes, absolutely. I mean, we don't have the best, you know, Wi-Fi signal <laughs> out here or cell phone out here, which is great because everyone can just relax, go down to our beaches. We have two beautiful beaches here. Or if it's the winter, just sit in front of the fireplaces that we have, which we have a fireplace in almost every room, and just read a book and relax. Let's talk a little bit about the rooms, and there's so much to talk about with this oh, property, sure. but the rooms themselves, I think, are very, very unique. Many, as you said, have fireplaces. Many have these really grand bathtubs, soaking tubs. Tell us more about the rooms themselves. Oh, I wish I could stay in every <laughs> room myself. Um, the rooms are all different. Every single room has a different element to it that makes it special and unique for that particular room. I actually have guests who fight over which room they're going to stay in. So, uh, you know, some of the rooms have a lot of history built to them. There's one room called Star. Mm. It actually, the entire ceiling has all these gold stars that are wood. Um, and that was actually installed in the 50s. Yeah, it's really cool because it is such a historic property, which people will experience when they come here. So you're getting kind of the serenity and the peace, but there, there's this whole piece of history as well. Oh, absolutely. And actually, I've really embraced, I've, I'm new to the Stone House mm. within the year, and bringing that history back has been so much fun. Part of it is that some of the families who have run this place in the past, and, you know, it was built in 1854, so obviously some have come and gone. But there are a lot. I mean, I even sat with Chris Rawson, who was the son of the Rawson mm -hmm. family, who owned it from the 50s to the 70s. And he is 81 years old and telling me about his tale of his parents kind of investing in the inn and turning it after the hurricane in 1938. It was, it's great. The history's amazing. There's so much here. And Kate, you know, I think a lot of people in the summer do think Newport. But, you know, this is beautiful mm -hmm. Rhode Island coastline. You know, why should people come on out? instead of maybe kind of doing the obvious thing that they're used to doing? It's a very different guest that comes here versus Newport. They are looking for all the things that Teresa just mentioned, serenity, peace, exclusivity, and that's what we provide. But there's a small element here that we haven't spoken about yet, which is gathering. The Stone House is about gathering. We have 14 rooms, which could be 16 because some of them are two-room suites. A lot of the families that live around here in Little Compton, some of them are summer people. They come back for the holidays. Their homes are overflowing, so they put their guests here. We have lots of great um, you know, retreats for friends, wellness retreats. We do corporate bookings where they just want to sort of 
not be bothered mm. and kind of like a think tank type of situation. So we do a lot of cor corporate retreats, birthday getaways, mm. family reunions. That stuff is perfect for here because it's quiet, it's peaceful, undisturbed. We have two uh, sort of co not common areas. I guess you would call them like event them spaces. Kind of, We're not yeah. really doing events, but we will do smaller dinners for everyone that's in in house. So, so it's a really special property that's very unique that people might not be used to. So there's a lot more to talk about with Stonehouse. You really have to come and experience it for yourself. But we are not done here this morning. Stick around because we're going to check out a little bit more in the area around us. But for now, back to you guys. Now we are on the road this morning headed to the coastline in Little Compton. Founded in 1975, Seconded Vineyard rests on 150 beautiful acres of land. Ashley Erling joins us now to tell us about their award winning wines. It's a tough gig. Good morning, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I assigned myself the worst jobs, don't I? I don't know how this happened. That's right. Seconet Vineyard is on the way to Stonehouse, where we are located this morning. And this whole area is so beautiful. You want to make sure to take advantage of everything it has to offer. Jenna from Seconet Vineyard is here with me to tell me all about it. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us bright and early. Now, Seconet has been around for a while, and I think many are familiar. But of course, you know, COVID, post-COVID, things have opened, closed reopened open but you guys are fully open and ready for people right yes of course so we've been in the area since 1975 uh, technically making us the oldest uh, vineyard in New England we are fully estate so that means everything grows right here on the property uh, 150 acres uh, of beautiful grounds that we have 30 are under vine at the moment and we have 10 varietals that we're offering Let's talk a little bit about the property and the experience that people might have when they come to visit you. You know, it's a little bit unique. Every vineyard is a little bit different. What is the Connet Vineyard like? Um, so it's beautiful upon arrival, um, especially right now. Everything is in full bloom. We have the beautiful Adirondack chairs in our field area, some light music playing in the background. You can see the vines from where you're sitting, too. Um, to be able to taste some of our wines, we offer you the chance to try six of them. There are 10 available to sample off the list, so it's a really great way to see the range of style of wine that we offer. And then we also have a flight available too. So we've picked our four most popular wines for people to sample. That way they can just kind of enjoy the seat, um, enjoy the view, and enjoy the property. So let's talk about some of the wines. You've been gracious enough to bring some here today. Yep. And you uh, does it rotate throughout the year for wines? How does it work? Uh, depends on the harvest of the year. Um, so it depends what we're able to collect, what the winemakers think about doing for the year, um, barrels, things like that. A lot mm -hmm. of um, thought has gone into what we'll create for the year. What I brought um, is a blush style wine right now. That would be our eye of the storm. This has a lot of history with the vineyard. Um, since 85, when Hurricane Gloria came into the area, that's kind of how the eye of the storm got uh, mm. birthed. That will be the actual Doppler radar of the storm itself. A lot oh, of people, cool. yeah, yeah. So a lot of thought goes into our labels as well. Um, kind of being able to tie something into the property, into and the, the area. And the other two that you brought, and yes. we'll quickly uh, sample one as well. What are these two? So Siren is our Vidal Blanc. So that's our best selling white wine at the moment. Um, it's within the Pinot Grigio family, has some nice refreshing acidity to it. Very popular mm -hmm. come in the summertime. And then Amen is our Pinot Noir depicted by the Black Panther. Um, a pretty light Pinot Noir, it's aged in American oak, touch of smokiness, some nice like cranberry and violet for notes as well. Beautiful, so let's try this one quickly. Um, what a beautiful summer wine. I would imagine this is yes. very popular. Oh right yes, now. yes, yes, yes. Um, great to pair with things too in the summer, some salads, chicken, um, really anything, pasta as well. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah, that's nice and light exactly. and kind of nothing too much. No, not at all. It's something that a lot of people can enjoy. You can share with your uh, family that you bring, friends mm -hmm. with you bring. Um, we offer by the bottle, by the glass, too. We really just want to um, invite a really welcoming environment for family, friends to gather, enjoy, relax. Um, it's yeah. beautiful area, beautiful space, and we really want to encourage people to come down and visit us. Absolutely. It's a great experience. And speaking of experiences, we are not done here yet this morning. You may have heard of a little spot called Ground Spa. Well, I am going to take you there coming up. So stay tuned. But for now, back over to you. Welcome back, everybody. We are on the road this morning, making our last stop of the day to learn about a cafe, bakery, garden, and home shop that's combined into one. How cool. That's right. Now, it's called Groundswell, and it's located in the heart of Tiverton Four Corners. Ashley joins us live right now to tell us all about it. Hey, Ashley. 
Hey guys, good morning. Yeah, if groundswell is not on your summer bucket list yet, you absolutely have to add it. This is such a unique and special property, so you know I had to go and check it out for myself. A friend of mine, she called me and she said, the Provender building is for sale. So I came down, it's like an hour away, and put an offer in on it that night, not really knowing what we were gonna, going to do with it. Call it fate or divine intervention, but Groundswell was meant to be. Always understanding that we wanted to start with coffee because I've always been very intrigued by uh, the nature of coffee and how people do, you know, everybody drinks coffee or tea. So we always had started with that and then the rest kind of blossomed as we went along as the properties became available. So the concept was always there. What started as a buzzed about concept has turned into a destination for Rhode Islanders and beyond. The main building is um, our flagship, the mothership as we refer to her so affectionately. Uh, built in 1890, um, had always served the public, the ground floor since that time for this community so that was really important for us. So we always knew that we wanted to kind of honor what it had always been. We wanted to keep that story going because we know that that served a purpose here in the community. So that building is pastry, food, and coffee driven. We do make everything in-house. We are full-on scratch bakery. We have 66 people who currently work for us. Bakers start around two in the morning. We have a full baking facility in the basement. And then as they kind of like flesh out and it starts to, they go home, then our kitchen staff comes in where we're then making, you know, everything, all the sandwiches, all the salads. So um, everything is made fresh daily. Everything is, is literally comes out of our space. This is our garden and home store. So here you'll find an array of everything that kind of takes a nod back to gardening. So it'll be, whether it's candles or linens or plateware or even uh, many terrariums. So everything has to have a nod back to, to gardening here. I'm a landscape architect, so I really, that's kind of my passion and my love. And so that needed to be like definitely a nod to what I do personally. You know, you have to be passionate about something obviously to make it successful hopefully, but so that really embodies everything that I love about nature. This is our table and provision store. There, we have everything inside to have a great party, anything you want to make. We have great linens, great dishware, glassware, tons of barware. We have everything for any time you want to entertain. We wanted that to kind of be a playoff of like things that you might take to the beach. So it's kind of like Dina DeLuca meets Ina Garten kind of thing. So you can get, you know, any kind of provisions if you're cooking. So we have everything from like pasta. So it's not really prepared foods. It's everything that you would do in order to prepare foods. So, you know, the idea is, is that you know, people get very inspired by what we're doing and the food, and then they want to try it themselves. For David, it's all about the experience. I'm obsessed with Paris, so it certainly embodies the nature of Paris. I want people to kind of relax. I want it to be a destination. I want them to kind of chill for, you know, 10, 15 minutes, kind of disengage from uh, any computers and things like that, and then go on and live your day, but have a moment to yourself. You can't buy that experience, so it's actually not even, it's not even tangible. It's something that you really, ha it's, you know, it's kind of like out there, you know, that you can't really put your finger on. For me, you know, it's like the textures, the colors are really important inside the cafe. So the blue that's on the doors, it kind of drove everything for design, was based out of the doors in Paris. So I would take pictures of through years, I was never knowing really what I was, why I was accumulating blue doors. And then finally, when I had this spot, I was like, these doors need to be this Paris blue, you know? And so that kind of started the story for us. We wanted to kind of have an updated contemporary version of a Paris Parisian cafe. I'm just saying like people, you know, we get lots of families. We, you know, we're very, you know, tons of kids, tons of dogs. I want everybody to be having a good time. So we do offer the different areas for different people to kind of experience different things. You know, we have a green space, we have the cafe if you kind of just want to hang out, you know, and then you can be on a porch if, you, if that kind of speaks to you, or you can be under an umbrella. We just wanted an experience. We want you to kind of just leave with kind of not knowing what you're quite getting. Team Groundswell knows they found a forever home in Rhode Island. I'm all about community. I want to be here for the community. Our employees, probably 90% are from this local community. And it's great to find like the talent here and give them a nice working environment. We are expanding, so we're opening in Bristol in the late fall, a full restaurant uh, with the liquor license and full production bakery. 
Um, and we are looking at some other markets within kind of the Rhode Island uh, mass kind of area. Well, much like David, I am also obsessed with Paris, so you know how much I love it. And you guys, it is just a short drive down the road from where we are this morning here at Stonehouse. So if you happen to be in the area, you absolutely must stop by. I swear you could spend the whole day there. All right, now back over to you.